In the early 17th century, Englishmen sailed to a new world, hoping to make their fortunes. The first permanent English settlement was established at Jamestown in 1607. In 1619, Captain William Powell, an early leader of this first colony, received an extensive land grant just across the river from Jamestown. His property was part of the territory of a friendly Algonquin Indian tribe of the powerful Powhatan Confederacy. For more than 5,000 years, the local natives had sporadically occupied this land. Powell named his plantation in honor of the current Algonquin chief, Chopoke. Ascending from the river, dense woodlands open to lush pastures and thriving cropland. The early river house stands proudly. Former slave quarters speak of an era in American history never to be forgotten. Set among tall cedar trees, the mansion of a successful planter is graced with the tranquility of a colonial revival garden. Today, Chip Oaks Plantation is preserved and maintained by the Virginia Department of Conservation and Recreation for enjoyment and use by everyone. Chip Oaks is one of the few plantations that has retained its original boundaries for nearly 400 years while being continuously farmed. Captain Powell cleared and cultivated the fields, but later absentee landowners employed overseers to maintain the plantation. The most prominent 17th century owner of Chip Oaks Plantation was the colonial governor, Sir William Berkeley. During Berkeley's ownership, a toll road was built between Chip Oaks and the neighboring estate of Arthur Allen. The road was necessary to provide Allen's estate with access to the James River, which was the principal mode of transportation for the developing colony. The home of Arthur Allen would play an important role in the 1676 revolt against Governor Berkeley, led by Nathaniel Bacon. He and his supporters seized the house for use as a headquarters, which is why today it is called Bacon's Castle. The rebel troops used Chip Oaks as an encampment and to pasture their horses. Shortly following the unsuccessful revolt, which became known as Bacon's Rebellion, the widowed Lady Berkeley inherited Chip Oaks Plantation. She remarried Colonel Philip Ludwell from an important family in early Virginia politics, but neither the couple nor their heirs ever lived on the plantation. The first record of slaves at Chip Oaks dates to 1687, when Ludwell paid taxes for 10 slaves and an overseer. Over the years, the slaves grew corn, golden grains, fruit, and tobacco, under the watchful eyes of the overseers. The overseers lived in small houses provided by the plantation's owners. The slaves lived in houses similar to the small ones along Quarter Lane. Lucy Ludwell, heiress to the plantation, married John Paradise. Because they were British subjects, loyal to the crown during the American Revolution, the Commonwealth of Virginia confiscated their land. Several years after the Revolution, with the help of their close friend Thomas Jefferson, the confiscated lands were returned to the Ludwells. Chip Oaks remained in the Ludwell family for more than 140 years. In the early 19th century, the plantation was bought by Albert Jones, who became the first owner since William Powell to live on and manage the property. The Jones family lived in the River House for 22 years. But in 1860, they moved into their newly completed Georgian mansion with Italianate and Greek revival detailing. As was common practice during that era, the kitchen was built away from the main house because of summer heat and the constant threat of fire. Albert Jones prospered by developing extensive fruit orchards for the production of brandy. His apple and peach brandies enjoyed fine reputations throughout the area. Chip Oaks survived the Civil War unscathed. Local legend claims it was because Jones sold his brandies to both Union and Confederate troops, who made sure their supply of same would not be interrupted. Jones also successfully grew peanuts. Though considered unfit for human consumption at the time, they were an excellent feed crop for hogs. 
Peanuts helped create the famous flavor of the hams and bacons of Surrey and Smithfield, still enjoyed to this day. After a long history of continuous use, the plantation slipped into disrepair. In 1918, it was purchased by Evelyn and Victor Stewart. They remodeled Albert Jones' antebellum mansion, embellishing it with antiques from the 18th and 19th centuries, bringing new life to the plantation. Behind the mansion, the boxwoods, crepe myrtles, and azaleas that line the colonial revival garden were planted by Evelyn. Throughout its history as a working farm, African Americans have played an important role. At times, more than 50 slaves were living and working at Chip Oaks. After the Civil War, many former slaves worked the land as sharecroppers alongside their white neighbors. By the end of the 19th century, sharecropping began giving way to tenant farming, where workers lived on the property and drew straight wages. They lived in the houses still found along Quarter and Cedar Lanes. Some of these dwellings have been converted to rental cabins for park visitors. Henry Blunt became the first black farm manager of Chip Oaks in the early 1900s, a position which he continued after the Stewarts bought the farm. In the 1920s, the Stewarts built Blunt a new house, which the park has now refurbished for public use. In 1967, the gently rolling 1,400-acre estate was willed to the Commonwealth of Virginia by Evelyn Stewart as a memorial to her husband. Victor Stewart, an outstanding figure in Virginia's lumber industry, was also one of the state's leading conservationists of his time. It was the Stewart's wish that Chip Oaks remain a vital working plantation. In keeping with those wishes, the agricultural fields and pastures are leased to local farmers who use modern farming practices to produce corn, peanuts, soybeans, wheat, and cotton. Beef cattle graze in the pastures. Changes in the farming techniques and machinery used on a southern plantation are chronicled in the displays at the Chip Oaks Farm and Forestry Museum. The museum occupies seven buildings in the historic area of the park across the road from the River House parking lot. There, visitors learn about the history of agriculture, forestry, and conservation. The four main phases of farming, preparing the soil, planting, cultivating, and harvesting, are interpreted through a diverse collection of artifacts, toys, housewares, farm tools, leather working devices and carpentry tools all contribute to the understanding of what life was like on the farm throughout history. An 1800-foot interpretive forestry trail connects the main museum to its 1930s era sawmill. Purchased by Victor Stewart, the mill was used to produce wood products for this plantation and neighboring farms. During special events at the park, such as the annual steam and gas engine show in June, and the Pork, Peanut, and Pine Festival in July, the sawmill is operated by volunteers demonstrating log sawing techniques. Visitors come to the park to relax and enjoy a wide range of recreational activities. To accommodate our visitors, special events, educational programs, and tours of the historic area, including the 1854 mansion, are offered throughout the year. Chip Oaks offers hiking, biking, and equestrian trails, a picnicking area, a campground, and an Olympic-sized swimming pool located near the visitor center. A walk along the two miles of Riverfront Beach provides one perspective on the local natural environment. A guided canoe trip along Lower Chip Oaks Creek provides quite another. Some guests come to use and enjoy the day-use facilities or stay in the campground while others prefer the accommodations available in the overnight guest houses, which were converted from tenant houses. In recognition of the Department of Conservation and Recreation's faithful stewardship of Chip Oaks, Ms. Lucy Reeser donated the adjoining 262-acre Walnut Valley Farm to the park in memory of her late husband, Woodrow W. Reeser. This property, with its 18th century house and slave quarters still intact, are to be developed for public use. History, recreation, and a working plantation all come together to make Chip Oaks unique among the many state parks in Virginia.